Welcome to Changemakers on WVCR 88.3 The Saint, where we profile changemakers in our local communities across the country and around the world. We are also the recipient of the New York State Broadcasting Association's 2014-2015 Serving New York Award. So today it's actually just me hosting. Um, everybody has other plans, even though tomorrow is my graduation. <laughs> but no, that's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely I'm getting ready for that. Uh, Definitely have a, a busy schedule going on, but I can't believe it's coming. I can't believe it's tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it'll be a it'll be quite an exciting day. Um, other than that, uh, in about a week, I'll be starting my new position at the Boys and Girls Clubs of Albany as the director of development and marketing. Um, so definitely uh, visit our website so you can find out more about the Boys and Girls Club, which is bgcalbany.com. Um, we have a lot of exciting things coming up at the club, including uh, summer camp is starting. So if you have a child that you'd like to um, sign up, there are applications on that website that I mentioned. And definitely like our Facebook page uh, to find out more information about our teen programs and um, a lot of other fun and exciting things we have going on. And also if you are a, a community member that wants to get, in, get involved and you have an organization that wants to get involved with Planning something for the kids, we are always open to that as well. So definitely check out our website. Um, but I'm just going to start right off and introduce our guest that we have with us today. Her name is Amber Marino, and she is the executive director of 15 Love. Um, before I start to speak with her a little bit, I'm going to read her very impressive bio that we have here. So Amber Marino has been with 15 Love since the summer of 1996. She graduated from the College of St. Rose with a bachelor's degree in education and mathematics and went on to graduate school at Villanova University to obtain her master's in counseling and human relations. Amber's personal background experience, experiences in the classroom and counseling at-risk high school students have given her a unique perspective on running a nonprofit. Her first business experience was as a child, helping run her grandmother's corner grocery store, which is more about her grandmother's connections with the people in the town than the bread and milk they were there to buy, people were there to buy. Um, that sense of community is one of the biggest attributes a Amber brings to 15 Love. Um, so welcome to the show, Amber. Thanks for having me. So now, is this your, this isn't your first time on the show, is it? I don't think so. I think I did this one other time All a right. couple of years ago with a Sienna graduate, actually, who's also a graduate of our program, Sugum Langer. Oh my gosh, that's right. I remember that. So now um, we want to start off by just getting to know our, our guests a little bit. So you were you were teaching a little bit before 15 Love. Um, tell us about that experience. I taught middle school math and computers. So that was loads of fun. <laughs> and um, I, anyone else I've met who has taught middle school, it's like a little exclusive club. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to have a special kind of patience and passion to teach middle school, I think. But it, I, I just loved it. Um, I had a great time. But what I really realized is, although I absolutely believe in um, – and math and, and how it helps you to think in different ways, what I was really passionate about was helping the kids to figure out more about life mm -hmm. than than the square foot of their bedroom. So um, I ended up from there going back to get my master's in counseling and human relations okay. at Villanova and then uh, coming back to 15 Love. So um, so it was fun. I had a great time. I I even did tennis with those kids there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, this was really where my passion was. Okay. So now you mentioned that you have experience working with uh, counseling at uh, high-risk uh, high school students. That must have been really um, difficult maybe at times. Tell us about that. That was difficult at times. I was in Philadelphia when I was uh, working on my master's at Villanova. I had an internship. Um, it was a unique partnership with the school and this high school. It was an all-boys um, inner-city high school, and I was working with a, a specific group of at-risk kids, and they were in this special program for different reasons. Um, one of them had had leukemia and you know just been in hospitals his whole life and 
Um, so he just needed extra academic support and social mm-hmm. support. And uh, and the others had some other interesting issues. We had drug dealers and um, some violence issues and arrest issues. So so a, lo- a lot of things happening. And, and it was an amazing experience watching the kids and really the families just transform for that year. So uh, I remember one boy who was a drug dealer and also was using and uh, uh, working the whole year, eventually convincing him that, you know, treatment was a good option. Mm -hmm. And this is not what he wanted to do for the rest of his life. Um, And then his mother saying no, because it was right before Christmas. And she didn't want him to be gone for the holidays. So, you know, it was, um, uh, you know, I was, I mean, I was young. I was so proud of myself. And then, you know, this, uh, so it was just, um, it it was, it was an interesting, difficult, but amazing experience. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed it. So how did experiences like that, I mean, I'm sure it taught you a lot of patience, um, (laughs) How did that prepare you for your role currently as the executive director of 15 Love? Sure. Well, while I was still doing my undergrad work at St. Rose, um, I I taught for 15 Love. So I I taught tennis and and life skills. And uh, even my first um, two years of teaching, I came back and helped out as well. So I, I knew the program pretty well. And then when I went away for my master's, and came back, um, the president of the board, Herb Schultz, contacted me and said, you know, I know you're graduating. Let's talk about, you know, coming in and seeing what might happen here. And, and the other executive director had had the position for 12 years at that point, and um, I think she was just ready to retire. Mm-hmm. So I came back, but it was I mean, everything helps. Every little experience helps. And, you know, there's not a day that goes by that, you know, I don't have two identical days. So, um, you know, growing up, my mother, (laughs) my my job in the house was to clean the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, at the 15 Love office, I clean the bathrooms. (laughs) So every experience really helps. (laughs) (laughs) So tell us exactly what is 15 Love for, for those of our listeners who are unsure about what it is. Sure. We are an inner city youth program. We serve Albany, um, Schenectady, and Rensselaer counties. We're focused in the inner cities um, in those three counties. And it's a free program. We will see almost 4,000 kids each year. Um, As the name suggests, we have a lot to do with tennis. um, And that's what we're best known for, for the free tennis programs that we have in the parks. There's 13 different parks over the summer that we're at. And every lesson, though, includes what we call an off-court, which is a life skills and education session. So the kids will play tennis for an hour and then a half hour of off-court. And we try to keep that fun. We last year uh, updated our recycling and the environment off-court so that um, kids would bring in like a, a recycled water bottle and we lined them up. We use these big foam tennis balls now to teach the younger kids how to play uh, tennis. So we used those foam balls and we did bowling. And <laughs> while they were doing that, they were talking about, you know, how many of these we use and how many times that wraps around the earth each year. So, it, you know, and they went to, I think, four different stations and learned different things and played little fun games and did, um, you know, we tried to make it interesting. So um, the program also has a lot of other offshoot programs. We have a college prep and a leadership program for high school kids. We have uh, book clubs for second and third graders at two um, inner city schools in Albany. And we have a garden that we built a few years ago, which is just amazing. Mm. And we also do a healthy cooking class series. So trying to use food from that garden, but we do that year round as well. Okay. So we have a lot of stuff going on <laughs> yeah so you're you're not just a summer program then you have things going what do you do during the year besides so you said that you do tennis during the summer is mm-hmm. there tennis that runs during the year as well there's tons of tennis that runs during the year and we'll see just about as many kids that seven week session in the summer sees about as many kids as we do the rest of the winter but uh, we go our program director will go into some schools and work with the phys ed teachers and do a school program during the day which is fun 
And then we have after school programs. So we actually work with the Boys and Girls Club. um, And we go into their uh, gymnasiums and we provide the program. And it's free of charge to the schools and to the Mm -hmm. um, after school programs as well. So, um, and we we do have open classes on Saturday mornings. Okay. That'll start um, in October again. So what is it about, you know, taking a skill like tennis and then taking, you know, life building skills? What is it that just makes that work? <laughs> <laughs> this when when 15 Love was founded, they the uh, it was a group of local people and they really thought tennis inherent in the game has some great life skills and I really think that's still true today. Um, that there aren't any referees like there are in other team sports. You know, there's there's not an umpire out there behind home plate. Mm-hmm. There's not a ref on the basketball court. It's you and uh, your opponent, and you two are calling your own lines and agreeing on, you know, everything in the match. So um, th- there's just a lot of life skills inherent in the game itself. Um and then, you know, we do it in a fun way. So we try to, you know, tennis is a great outreach. Kids want to come and have fun, and they do. And uh, and that's really important. It's such a healthy activity. It's something you can do well into your 80s. We have board members, and they're, you know, still kicking. I mean, they, they're <laughs> playing every day. So um, it's, it's a lifelong sport, which is wonderful. Uh, it definitely keeps you healthy, and um, it's it's – we we just have a lot of fun with it. Very cool. So now, are there any new programs or initiatives that have been introduced within these past few years? Definitely our Garden and Healthy Living program are, are new. And um, with the help of uh, uh, VISTAs that we've had through Siena, mm-hmm. actually that that program has really taken off. We were lucky to be able to build our garden. I think it's three years ago now. And um, that program has been amazing. So we're, we're mm-hmm. looking to continue to grow it and um, develop partnerships around that as well. That's so exciting. I love how a lot of organizations are really starting to um, grow gardens now. I think that's a great addition to many nonprofits. So, um, so thank you so much for telling us about the basics of 15 Love. But uh, stay tuned because we'll be right back with our guest, Amber Marino, um, to talk more about the summer programs that they have available for you listeners out there. We'll be right back on Changemakers. If I can reach the stars, pull one down for you, shine it on my heart. Welcome back to the Changemakers Radio Show on WBCR 88.3 The Saint, awarded the New York State Broadcasting Association Serving New York 2014 to 2015 award. We profile changemakers across the country and around the world. Um, we've been speaking with Amber Marino, who is the exec- executive director of 15 Love. So welcome back to the show, Amber. Thank you. Um, so now before the break, we spoke about 15 Love. Um, we talked about your mission and how the organization started and also the programs and events happen that during the winter. Um, now we'd like to shift the focus a little bit to the summer and what you have going on for this upcoming summer. Um, what, what does the summer look like usually for 15 Love? <laughs> Straight chaos. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have a lot of fun in the summer. So we've got 13 different sites at parks in Albany, Schenectady, Troy, and Rensselaer. Okay. Um, and families are welcome to sign up and, you know, go to programming at any of those sites. Everything that we do is free. So it's it's pretty simple that way. Um and we, our programming runs from 1 in the afternoon until 8.30 in the evening. That last hour from 7.30 to 8.30 is actually an adult class so that families can really learn together. And this is something that they can enjoy together for years to come. So um, the, the kids usually have a blast watching their parents out there <laughs> sure. learning and, and doing the things that they just did, which is, which is nice. Um, but the classes run an hour and a half each, except for the little kids, the the four and five year olds, 
they play for 45 minutes. Okay. So they'll do a half hour of tennis and then a 15 minute story time. So uh, it's a little bit different for them. And then the adults just have the hour of tennis. We don't do off courts with them, but our, our, the rest of our kids, um, six to 18, they'll do an hour of tennis and a half hour of what we call um, off course. So the, the life skill session. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. The sites run, um, one site will run either on Monday, Wednesday, or on Tuesday, Thursday. And then we have a few that just run on Fridays. Those are sites that we just added a few years ago, um, just to expand our reach a little bit. So um, the like for instance, Lincoln Park in Albany only runs on Monday and Wednesday, and then we have a different park on Tuesday, right? Arbor Hill Park and Westland Hills Park, on Tuesday and Thursday in Albany. So you, in each county, you can get to a site every day of the week. Okay. So now do you have any uh, full day summer camps that you run, or is just the just the hour pro the hour and a half programs that you mentioned? Yeah, we don't have a summer camp only because we don't really have a space for that. Right. So if it rains, we're we're out of luck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if we did have a space, we would love to be able to offer that, but right now we can't do that. Um, we just we work with a lot of summer camps over over the summer. So the boys and girls clubs, mm -hmm. um, some of the churches who run camps. Uh, the the YMCA, um, just a lot of different places. Even um, um, a couple of the charter schools run summer programs, and so mm -hmm. we have we work with a lot of camps and groups over the summer. But we don't we don't run our own, and it is free. If anyone's out there running a camp, it is free for the camps as well. That's really cool. So now you mentioned that parents can get involved and mm -hmm. learn about tennis as well. Um, what has that been like? Are there a lot of parents who take advantage of this? Uh, the, the, quite a few parents will try it out. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's it does end up being a late night with your kids if you know it ends at eight thirty. So if, when they have younger kids, sometimes it's tough, but um, but they do, and and usually they have a lot of fun with it. Our our adult class is just you know meant to be fun and relaxed and get some exercise. And, you know, it's it's nice because then they can go out and, you know, in the summertime, tennis is not that expensive of a sport. Um, you can get a racket and some balls at a at a garage sale. Usually you can find mm -hmm. tennis rackets all the time and um, go out and play. And it's something fun and active and healthy that they can do with their families. Right. So it's it's fun. And the kids, like I said, really love seeing their parents out there <laughs> sure and it's not just parents who are welcome we welcome any adults who want to come it's just anyone over 18 years old is in that adult class so okay um they're certainly we have grandparents mm -hmm. um and just community members as well who come okay. out which is great so now do you have to sign up for something like this or do you just show up you actually just show up and you when you get there though you do have to sign up so okay. we have a registration form on site that that you'll complete, but we don't have any um, pre-registration. Um, the numbers tend to, you know, be similar summer after summer, but we'll adjust our staff accordingly if if the numbers get out of hand at any one site. So um, it's it, it usually works works out. This will be our twenty sixth summer, so we've been wow. we've got a good idea of what's yeah. going on at the parks. Right. So it, it's. It, we try to make it as easy as possible for us and for the families. So you just come the first day you can come because a lot of families travel that first week after school gets out. We start right away in June as soon as school gets out. Um, and, you know, if they're not there the first week or two, that's fine. They can come and start whenever mm -hmm. they're ready to do that. Okay. So now it sounds like a lot of people are taking advantage of this and you have staff, but you also mentioned that it's completely free. <laughs> so how does how does that work? Do you get how, where do your funding fundraisers or what do you what do you have going on? We do we have one major fundraiser, and that's coming up at the beginning of June. Um, but we really rely on donations, and we write a lot of grants, and um, we do whatever we can do to raise the funds. Mm -hmm. So it's we also have a lot of volunteers who help as well. Um, but our staff, for the most part, our summer staff actually has come up through our program, which is really amazing. Oh, cool. So, you know, we'll hire probably 16 to 18 summer staff members. 
and usually at least 75% of them have come up through our program. That's really cool. It is cool, and it really gives them, you know, just a nice background, and also it gives them a unique perspective because they were on the other side of the net at one point, um, and they know what the kids are going through, and the kids can say, hey, you were over here one day, and now you're over there. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I can get there someday. So it's really kind of nice. Um, but also what we found is our graduates tell us that that experience absolutely prepares them for the workplace. Like you're out there uh, on a tennis court with 20 screaming, right. <laughs> excited screaming kids. And, you know, you've got to find your voice and you've got to figure out what to say and what to say fast. Mm -hmm. And then when something goes wrong, you've got to figure out how to handle it fast. So um, it's it's really just become kind of part of our leadership program almost mm -hmm. so. so you yes yeah, like you said you that you have a lot of um, students who start out in the program and then go on and become teachers can you tell us about a story or some sort of memorable um, student that you can think of that you feel like this program really impacted their life like, there's there's a lot of them <laughs> yeah um i'll probably the, one of the biggest impacts was on our actually on our program director who's there now so he uh, played as as um, a child he was in the program I was actually one of his coaches which makes me feel a little bit old sometimes <laughs> and um, for years I tried to fix his serve it never it never really worked but mm -hmm. that's besides the point <laughs> so <laughs> he grew up in Albany um, you know had a, a a little bit of a tough upbringing and um, he became an instructor. He went off to college. He was the first in his family to go to college, and he, he graduated with an education degree. He was a teacher for a while, but this is really his passion. Great. So he came back as our program director, and he's, you know, we're getting him as much training as possible. He goes to national trainings all the time, and he's become um, uh, one of the uh, probably one of the best school, um, we call them clinicians. He's very good at, at working with large groups of kids, especially in schools. Mm -hmm. And he goes around and helps train other people to do that now. So it's really made a huge wow. impact on his life. Um, and, and he's now having a huge impact on 15 Love, which is wonderful. That's great. I love seeing story, hearing about stories like that. It's definitely, um, Definitely shows that the organization is working. It's doing its job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so how can um, our listeners find out a little bit more about what's available at 15 Love or sign up for something that you mentioned today? Sure. They can for sure go to our website. It's um, just 15love15love.org. Mm -hmm. .org, and the summer schedule is up there. Um, you'll see where to go, what time to go, mm -hmm. <laughs> what class is appropriate. And if there are any questions, they can always call our office at 518-438-2039, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that anybody might have. Okay, great. So um, do you have anything else going, at 15, going on at 15 Love that you'd like to share? Um, I know you do have a big event that happens every year. Tell us about that. Our, our fundraiser. Oh, your fundraiser, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's uh, a golf and tennis day actually held at Skylar Meadows right behind Sienna. Um, and it's it's a lot of fun. We, we have um, people coming out in the morning for tennis and in the afternoon for tennis. And then all afternoon they're golfing. We end it with a dinner. Um, there's a lunch in there as well. And then we have a couple of our kids speak and there's an auction and we, we do a little speaking hand out prizes and stuff and mm -hmm. um it's just a real nice evening and we have a, some of the kids there and people generally like getting to know the kids right. and you know interacting in that way so um it's a real nice event we call it actually for love and money so <laughs> or for the golf love for the tennis and there you go money to help us out but <laughs> um the other thing is we do a book giveaway so we're always okay. collecting used children's books and we actually have a book giveaway coming up. I believe it's May twentieth. So anybody okay, who's looking for free used children's books, um, definitely give us a call, and mm -hmm. you can find out more information about that as well. Great, that's great to know. Um, so we always love to ask our guests this 
this very important question here on the show, and that is, what does a change maker mean to you? Um, for me, it's really somebody who can make connections, I think. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, who's got a passion for what and where can you help and how can I help in that process? So um, mm-hmm. I, I think that's what it's kind of about, making connections and using your passions uh, to really help our community. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show with us um, today. And also, um, you know, can you just throw out your information one more time of how people can get involved? And that would be great. Sure. Yeah. It's uh, 15love.org and 518-438-2039 is our phone number. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much again for being on the show with us. Um Uh, We look forward to your summer programmings and hearing what's going on. (laughs) Thank you. Um, And also, I just want to give a big shout out to the class of 2015 tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big day. So, um, yeah, be sure to watch the graduation. You can watch it on TV. So there we go. Um, So make sure you join us next week on Changemakers on WBCR 88.3, The Saint.